Hello again, this is uh, video three of my series where I'm taking a look at how to uh, create assets for a demo reel. Uh, in this video, what I want to cover is uh, how to bring elements into After Effects and to uh, set that up in the timeline. And uh, then in the uh, video that follows this, I'll kind of cover the exporting uh, from After Effects. So I'll just kind of show you the completed um, playthrough that I have here. I have all my elements composited uh, and then I also have this sort of like moving mask that I've created to add the wireframe on top which I think is kind of a slick way to uh, add that in and kind of show what's going on. So uh, now that it's buffered through I can kind of play through all the frames. You'll see what we've got here. So uh, anyway I'll just sort of like peel these frames away and uh, you'll see here's my wireframe. I can peel that off. Here's my occlusion. Peel that off. And then here's my base. All of that sort of peeled away one at a time. Now, you can use whatever compositing uh, techniques you want to do at this point as well. Uh, I have a whole series of uh, rendering multipass compositing as well that you can check out. Uh, and uh, certainly add any of that into this uh, that you want. But just looking at the basics here of how to bring a model in and kind of uh, get the wireframe on it, etc. This is all we really need to see. Uh, I'm going to make a new project, just sort of uh, starting off. So here's my um, After Effects default. Now one of the things that I almost always do is I almost always set my composition settings or my project settings, I should say, to uh, my color settings to be 32-bit per channel. Uh, I pretty much always will change that. Now you also want to make sure your time code base is set up properly. Uh, if you are rendering out um, from uh, your Maya scene and you've been working at 30 frames per second, make sure you're at 30 frames per second. Uh, if you're working for a DVD, uh, you're going to want to make sure you have uh, 30 frame per second video. Uh, I was working at 24 frames per second before this because I'm working on sort of a different uh, piece that requires that. So just right now I'm going to change my uh, frame per second to 30 frame per second. Uh, my color settings to 8 bit per channel and I'll say OK. Uh, and you can find this all done here at the bottom of your project window right there. So this is just your uh, rate and your settings and all those sorts of things that you'll be needing. Uh, I'm going to make a new composition uh, and I'm going to call this like base comp uh, and I'm going to use the NTSC DV preset. Now this is 720 by 480 and this is actually going to use DV uh, NTSC 0.91 uh, pixel aspect ratio. Uh, this is going to take what was my square pixels and now actually uh, get this into the right size. So uh, when I bring in my footage, this should bring this in and actually uh, make sure this is stretched appropriately. Uh, I'm going to go to File Import or right click on Import um, in the project window and choose File. And uh, here I'm going to bring in my multiple layers. I'll go to my master layer and I'll click on Cube 1. This is a Targa sequence. I render these as Targas. Um, and uh, here my alpha, I can just ignore it. That'll bring this image sequence in. And I'll just rename this as like master or base or something like that. I can drag this down to my timeline. Hey, there we go. If I hit play, there it is rotating. I'm going to right click and choose import file. Uh, here I'm going to go to images and bring in my occlusion layer. Uh, this is also a sequence, so I'll say open. And I'm going to ignore the alpha on this one. I'll right click rename and call it AO. Here I can drag this down on top of this sequence. And uh, in my uh, composition, I'll right click and set my blend mode to multiply. And uh, as you see here, this is going to add the deep shadows onto the render. So that's the purpose of the occlusion render. Now I'm going to go ahead and import in my wireframe right here. And uh, this one I'm actually going to keep the alpha. And I'll rename this as wireframe. This way, with the alpha kept, when I put this right on top, it's just going to cut out the outside edge. To, um, to show this as wireframe on top of shaded, again, I'm going to set my blending mode to multiply. And you'll notice that now you can see my wireframe sitting right on top of the shaded. So you see I can kind of peel these layers away and get this all working. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three. Uh, I like to usually have my turntable uh, rotate twice. Uh, and then I'm going to crop this in After Effects. So I'm not showing the whole first rotation or the whole second rotation. Uh, I'll just kind of be able to choose that later. But I like at least two rotations in my raw footage that I can use to uh, composite uh, when I get into Final Cut. Uh, so I'm going to take this footage and uh, I'm going to copy it and paste it. 
just a control C and control V. So I have all my three layers selected. Uh, and then I'm going to take the new three layers and just sort of uh, slide them over uh, to make sure I'm exactly matched up here. I'm going to zoom in, go right to that frame and make sure that I've got that sitting exactly one frame apart. So this now has this already set up. You'll notice my composition setting was uh, already cropped to the correct time because I've already done one work through on this. But if you need to go in your composition settings, so that is composition, composition settings, uh, and you can change the duration in um, hours, minutes, uh, seconds, and frames. And again, this is in 30 frames per second right now to make sure that, that works appropriately. So, you know, here you go. This is all rotating properly. There we go, I've got this wireframe on it the whole time. Now what I actually want to do here, instead of having the wireframe on the whole time, I want to have the wireframe uh, blend right onto the surface. And I'm going to do that by creating a moving mask. So since I don't want the wireframe on at the beginning, I'm just going to take this wireframe layer and delete it so it's not even there for the first rotation. It's only going to turn on for the second rotation. But instead of it being just turning on automatically, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it just sort of like turning on like this. I'm going to get a little bit slicker with it and create a mask. So uh, I'm just going to zoom out here real quick to like 33%. And uh, I'm going to select my wireframe layer. I'm going to get the pen tool, hotkey G in After Effects. And uh, I'm going to draw out like a diagonal with this. I like to have a lot of extra space up here. A good mask looks like the shape of Nevada or so, or a backwards Nevada, I guess. Um, I've got this uh, mask shape here. And you'll notice what's happening is that the mask shape currently is just cutting out this section. In my wireframe layer, I'm going to open this up. And under masks, I'm just going to invert it temporarily. Or I can turn it on, turn it off, whatever. You can see what it's doing here and which section it's masking out. You can choose which way your mask goes as a result of that. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is, in my mask, I'm going to open this up so I can see the mask path section. Here, I'll select my mask, and I'll get my pointer tool, a selection tool, hotkey V, and just sort of like move my mask out of the way. And what I want to do is I want to actually animate my mask kind of like moving across this surface, revealing the wireframe. So I'm just going to kind of put this up out of the way to start with and go to the sort of like first frame of this sequence and hit the stopwatch for mask path. Then I'll go a couple of frames later and I'll move this all the way across and that's it. I'll just say uh, fit up to 100% and uh, let's play this back. Now I've got my mask kind of sliding right across that surface. If I deselect it, you'll see this. Now it just looks like that mask is you know, appearing on the model. So I think this can be kind of a really cool and slick way to kind of show the wireframe transitioning onto your surface. Uh, certainly something to give a try for. Um, so this has been video three, where we've looked at importing our elements into After Effects. Uh, what we're going to do in the next video is talk about how uh, to properly export our elements from After Effects so that we have a good high quality uncompressed video that we can send into Final Cut for editing there. So please stay tuned for the next video.